So what we're going to be doing in AutoCAD is taking your uh, backyard concept designs with a koi pond and we're going to actually translate it into AutoCAD by drawing it. And in doing so, we're going to draw it in different layers with different colors um, so we can organize our work a lot better. Before we begin, though, what we're going to do is change our units of uh, measurement. Now, we're still working with inches and feet, but we're just changing the format. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on the letter A here. And then I'm going to go to Drawing Utilities. And then I want to go Units. So you can see by default, we're still working with inches. But instead of working with decimal, which is a little bit more confusing, I'm going to actually change it to Architectural. And Architectural is just basically fractional inches. And so with Architectural, I'm going to change a precision to quarter of an inch. And that just means that everything I do is going to be rounded to a quarter of an inch. I could round it to an inch because it's a large area, but I'll just leave it as a quarter of an inch for now. Now I'm going to click on OK. Now I also did say that we are going to be creating layers. And again, why layers? It just lets us organize our work a lot better. So have a look at this AutoCAD sample plan here. And you'll notice that it has a bunch of different colors. And each color or object is arranged on its own layer. So going back into AutoCAD, we're going to then go into our properties, layers properties, and bring this up. You might actually have to just grab the corner to uh, expand it so it's bigger or smaller. Now, all the information on the layers is contained in this document right over here, as well as all the different specifications for your uh, uh, landscape design. And so you can refer to this, or you could just follow with the video and pause it as you create the layers. So to create a new layer, we're going to create, click on the Create New Layer button here, and there's our first one. So we're going to call this one Dimensions. And so every time we add dimensions, we're going to use or select this layer, but let's make sure we have a different color and it's going to be blue. By the way, only use these colors here. Ignore these colors. They will cause problems. I'll explain why in just a bit. Okay, so let's grab another one and we're going to call this plants and trees. And if you guess this layer is green, you're absolutely correct. And again, I'm going to just take it from this row here. Next, I'm going to create this layer called Furniture and Deck. And I'm going to change this color to kind of a magenta. OK, next, viewports. And when we put this onto a sheet of paper, you'll need this particular um, uh, layer. And I actually just messed up. I do want this to be magenta, and I'm going to actually change this one here to red. So that's my mistake here. So red magenta. OK, so a new layer here. And this one's going to be the title block. There we go. And I'm now going to change the color of this one to this white. Do not use this white. Use this white. What this means is all my lines are going to be white, but when I print them off, they're going to be black. So that's why it's important that we choose this one here. And let me click on OK. OK, so the next layer that we have is called Yard Components. And we're going to leave it as white, but with one subtle difference, we're going to make our line stroke thicker at half a millimeter. So it stands out more prominently when it's printed off. OK, so the last layer that we're going to have is called the property line. And with that, I'm going to change the color to a darker gray, again, using these colors only and ignoring this down here. And I'm going to make the line weight relatively thick, but a little bit thinner than the uh, yard components one. The biggest difference with this, though, is I want to click on this and I want to select a different type of line type. So um, if you notice what I did is I just clicked on where it says continuous. And now I want to load all the different line styles. We're going to go with the very first one to make it easy. And I'm going to click on OK. And I'm going to make sure this is selected before we go ahead and click on OK. OK, so there's all my layers. And of course, I can close this off and I can modify afterwards just by clicking on the layers properties. So that makes it very, very easy. But like I said, when it comes to working with layers, you always want to select which layer that you're going to be working with. And since we're going to be doing the outline of the property, I will select property line. And close to this Y X part right over here, I'm going to start drawing out a rectangle uh, with precise measurements. 
Now, if you recall, the yard is going to actually measure 40 feet by 30 feet. What I've drawn here is only nine and a half inches by six and a quarter inches. Now, I know this unit of measurement is inches because of the quotation marks after them. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to type in 40 apostrophe. So the apostrophe denotes feet. Now, I, that's the, uh, the overall uh, length of the lot. And if I hit the tab key right by the escape key, I'm now going to type in 30 apostrophe enter. Now I'm going to zoom out and you can see that everything that I've drawn is actually one to one. So even though I'm zoomed out, this is still a 40 foot line and this is still a 30 foot line. How can I tell? Well, if I go to measure here and just change it to distance, you'll notice that from here to here is 40 apostrophe. Now, if it was 40 quotation mark, that means it's 40 inches and we have a problem. I can also confirm this right over here, that in fact it is 30 feet. So my yard is of the proper scale, drawn one to one. When we put on a sheet, it's obviously gonna be scaled down significantly. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually go to um, drawing the actual koi pond itself. So I'm just gonna change my layer to yard components. So based on my design of my koi pond, you can see that I have kind of two circles sort of like touching each other. And so I'm gonna to start to recreate that here. So here's my first circle. And maybe it's a little too close to the property line. I don't want it to flood over to my neighbor's side. So I'll just move that over. And let me just grab another circle right here. And I'm just gonna just start grabbing it and drawing it just roughly like that. That looks good. Now I love this new trim tool. It works fantastic. Because all I have to do is left click and drag and those lines inside are automatically gone. Okay, so while we're on yard components, what I plan to do is maybe just show a little bit of the back of the house. So I'm just gonna just put off my object snaps for one moment, and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle roughly like that to sort of represent the uh, width of the house. Let me just turn my object snaps back on here. Okay. So I know that based on my design, that my deck comes off the house and it also is pretty much the width of the house. So let's go ahead and now change our layer again because you always have to remember to change your layer. So now I got furniture and deck. So with my rectangle tool, I'm going to sort of eyeball this really roughly and this is gonna be about the size of my deck. Just like that. Actually it might be a little too big. So I'm just gonna grab this and just scale it back just with a grip. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a new function in AutoCAD called Path Arrays. So if you recall, you already know what a rectangular array is, and you of course know what a polar array is. Now we're going to actually work with a path array, which is it takes a bunch of objects and you can attach it to a path. So let's go ahead here and zoom in. And what I plan to do is using my polyline tool, I'm going to draw out some flagstone very similar to this here. Okay. So with my polyline tool, and if you notice, I have the wrong layer, so I'm just gonna go edit undo and put this back on the yard components. It takes a bit of getting used to working with layers, but it does make your life a lot easier because you can see what's going where. All right, so here's my first flagstone. And I'm just gonna repeat that command. Now, not all of you are gonna use this, um, you know, but it's just nice to know, and if you can just try it out, more power to you here. And I'm referring to the path array. Almost done. And maybe I'll just grab, create one more piece of flagstone here. Kind of wraps around here and interlocks. Perfect. Okay, the so next one I need is I need an arc. So I'm going to create an arc right about like that. Let's bend it. Good enough. Okay, so here's how the path array works. I'm going to go ahead and select path array and it says select object. So I want all the flagstone and only the flagstone. I'm going to right click to advance and you'll notice it says select path curve, which I'll do so right over here. And now you can see that I actually have an array. Now, if I grab this grip right over here, you can see if I bring this back, I can actually get more different 
patterns sort of attached to it. So let me just grab that a little bit more. There we go. And I can close the array editor. All right, so I need to get rid of this line here and I might find myself moving some of these uh, pieces of flagstone away from each other. So let's go ahead and explode the array. So here's the explode command. I'm gonna select the array, right click, and now it's individual objects. So I'll let you kind of, you know, pull around or pull these into different parts and move them so they're not overlapping. You can also use the trim tool if you wanted to like join some of them together to give a bit of a random effect. You can definitely do that. So let's go trim and I'm just gonna get rid of these lines and just so they look like one. Good enough. And I could do the same thing here and so on and so forth. I'll let you kind of play around with that anyways. Okay, so I've got a good start. And then I've got my property line. I've got my deck. Um, I've got a path. Um, heck, I could even actually use the offset tool to put it in my uh, little fire pit. So right over here, you'll notice I have kind of a brick kind of um, circular patio. And I got my little fire pit right in the middle here. So going into AutoCAD, I'm just going to use some offsets of circles to create this. All right, so here's the offset command. And again, this is review. You've learned this already, hopefully. And I specify the distance at six quotation marks. Remember, six inches. Enter. Now what I can do is kind of create that look that there's rows and rows of pavers. Okay, awesome. Now with any backyard design, you're gonna definitely need some trees. Now, rather than actually drawing out a bird's eye view or top view of trees, it's gonna be a lot easier if I actually work with something called uh, blocks. Now, blocks are essentially just a way of um, having a pre-made component that you can just you know, quickly grab and quickly just drop right onto your actual design itself. So in order with working with blocks, you'll notice that you've downloaded the file and it's in your downloads folder. So it's right over here where it's CAD tree blocks. Now I'm just gonna double click on this here. And now you can see all the different pieces of vegetation that I can choose from. And all I have to do is just copy it from one and paste it into the other, making it really, really easy. So for example, I'm gonna grab this one and I'm going to go Control C, or I can just go right click, copy selection. I like the shortcut keys myself. So Control C, I'm gonna go back into my drawing here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go control V or you can do a right click paste. Now a couple of problems here. You'll notice that my tree is way too big and I also have it on the wrong layer. So I'm going to have to fix that right now. So let me just go ahead and delete this. Now let me go ahead and select the plants and trees. Just like that. Whoops. I actually probably want to select the actual layer itself. Okay. So now I'm going to go control V and you'll see it's green. So let's take this tree and maybe place it roughly right about here. All right, and it defaulted to the wrong layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this one more time here. I'm gonna actually try copying this. Control C, let's go back into here. Yeah, plants and trees right over here. So that's the proper layer. Now let's go Control V and drop that. Hmm, that's interesting why it's actually a different color. I'm not too sure why it's doing that. Um, so let me just go back over here and change it. And for whatever reason, it just wants to sort of default to a different layer. So after you click and drag it and while it's selected, you'll have to unfortunately go into plants and trees one more time. I'll show that again. But before I do that, you'll notice that this tree is way, way too big for its size. So what we can do is we can scale this down. Scaling works very, very similar to say Trimble SketchUp in which you have something and you wanna make it bigger or smaller. So in terms of actually scaling this down, what I plan to do is go over here where it says scale and I wanna select the object. Let's do a right click to advance. Now, as far as the base point, I'm just gonna just take it from the middle here and you'll notice I can click and drag this so it's bigger or smaller or what I can do is I can actually, you know, select a scale factor. If I go 0 decimal 5 in my dynamic input box, it's going to actually create the tree half the size of the original, just like that. Okay, let's show this concept one more time. So what we're going to do is grab another CAD block, and the CAD block that I'm going to choose is maybe this one here. And I'm going to go Control-C, 
Going back into my drawing, make sure I have plants and trees layer. And now what I'm going to do is go control V and there it is. Now again, I'm not too sure why it's snapping into a different layer. So while this is selected, what we're going to do is we're going to take this while the grips are showing and we're going to put it on the plants and trees. Okay, let's go ahead and scale this now so it's smaller. So scale, click on my object, right click, base point's going to be in the middle, and I can sort of click and drag it like this, or I can specify a scale factor, and maybe my scale factor is 30% the size of the original. So I'm going to go 0 decimal 3, enter. And I can move these around afterwards any way that I want to. Now, one of the last things I'm going to show you here is working with hatchings or patterns. Now, one glitch or flaw that I think in AutoCAD is when you use hatching, sometimes the program crashes. Now, I talked about this in a previous lesson. So if I'm going to use hatching, I have to actually increase the size so I can actually see the texture of it itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my hatch button right here. Click on this. And then I'm going to probably find from the drop down menu something that might kind of resemble wood. So let's grab these uh, diagonal lines right over here. Okay, so I've got that. And I'm going to probably change the color to a red color. And if I do a, a mouse over, you can see that the red's going to fill. Now, here's the important part I have to increase the size of the scale of my hatching. Otherwise, this texture is actually not going to show up. Now, if I really, really, really zoom in, probably have to zoom in like crazy here. I can't quite see the texture. Okay, so what I need to do is I really need to increase the scale. Now, you'll see that by me increasing the scale, you can actually see the pattern is a lot clearer and it's not a solid. Make sure that you always increase or decrease the scale of the pattern. Otherwise, it will appear as a solid color and you don't want to crash your program. That's a sure way of actually crashing your program here. Now, same thing over here. Oh, let me actually just close the hatch editor. Okay, so this is nice kind of uh, deck wood all going in a diagonal pattern. Now, I'm going to go with a different hatching and I'm going to go with maybe a solid pattern. And maybe I want a blue color for my koi pond. So go ahead and play with uh, hatchings in different areas of your uh, landscape design. And once you're finished modeling or creating your design, uh, be sure to watch the other video that's going to show you how to actually put this and lay this out on a piece of paper um, ready for printing. Um, so with that video, give it a try, have fun, and just experiment. Remember, Control-Z or Edit-Undo is your best friend.